And let's move on now as we bring you more updates uh, from across the world and India as well. As uh, well, as day three uh, of uh, the it's day three of the BRICS summit, and the Prime Minister is in Johannesburg. Meanwhile, let's go across now to our top story of the time. It's uh, that the Pragyan rover has rolled out of the lander, the Chandrayaan-3 lander. It has. Uh, of the Vikram lander, it has rolled out and in fact it has been sending pictures uh, in this uh, to Earth of the moon's surface. It has uh, rolled out of the lander and is uh, carrying out its work. Joining me now from uh, the ground is uh, my colleague Suesha. Suesha. Is the next phase that we're seeing yesterday, as you reported uh, from where you know it was all happening uh, and where the scientists were of, uh, of ISRO were trying to maintain contact. We believe now that that phase two has been seamlessly and flawlessly been completed. Over to you. Absolutely seamless and flawless in every which way. The precision in which this entire mission has been carried out is just impeccable. And this is why our uh, ISRO scientists are being lauded across the globe. This feat that has been achieved of uh, India being the first country to have landed on the South Pole of the moon and this very latest development where ISRO has put out this feat. Chandrayaan-3 rover made in India. And I specify that made in India, made for the moon. Chandrayaan-3 rover rammed down from the lander and India took a walk on the moon. A historic moment indeed, uh, the moment that we had all been waiting for because uh, the mission and uh, the experiments that will now be performed rest on the rover. Let's understand once again that with the lander that has four payloads and the rover that uh, has uh, two payloads. And uh, just to take you through the specifics of how it will work, uh, the lander module uh, that had touched down perfectly at the lunar surface at 604 pm yesterday, whereas the rover that weighs 26 kg, it is six wheeled and uh, it descended from the lander's belly onto the moon's surface using one of its side panels as a ramp. The Republic was the first to show those pictures also to our viewers. Now, uh, the Vikram lander that weighs 1752 kg. And the land and the rover will now perform these experiments for one lunar day, that is 14 Earth days. The rover primarily will carry out in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface uh, during the course of its mobility. So primarily the payloads that are installed in the rover that will study the surface of the moon through its payload, APXS, that is Alpha Particle X-ray Spectrometer, to derive the chemical composition and infer mineralogical composition to further enhance the understanding of the lunar surface. So primarily, uh, this is basically to understand the composition of the soil, uh, the gases, uh, what uh, the surface of the moon comprises of, and the larger aim obviously is to understand whether there is any possibility of sustenance of life on the moon. So this is the rover that has successfully detached itself from the lunar, uh, uh, from the lander uh, in a powered descent. Now, uh, uh, you know, it is on the surface of the moon carrying out all the experiments one after the other. And like I said, it will be done in one lunar day, which is 14 Earth days. Primarily to understand the temperatures on the moon are extremely cold to the, you know, 180 degrees um, in the night where uh, uh, the lander module uh, and so as to say the rover doesn't have the thermal capacity to be able to survive itself in the night on the moon. So during the daytime, to be able to maximize this time to perform these experiments, that is how it will be conducted. And our ISRO scientists will keep putting out all the details. And remember this data, extremely invaluable, that uh, every superpower, every nation across the globe is uh, wanting to get ISRO itself as a... Uh, uh, said, you know, that all the data that comes out of Chandrayaan-3 is for global scientists. So, not only are we taking one step further when it comes to exploring the moon, but India leading the baton on that front. India leading the baton on that front. Absolutely, Suesha. And uh, uh, when we talk about, you know, sharing of best practices, uh, this is one of the most reasonably priced moon missions 
Uh, so there's lots that India can offer, as it has done before in uh, various other spheres, Suesha. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That goes without saying. And uh, let's understand that the very fact that India has uh, landed on the south pole of the moon, an uncharted territory where no other nation has ever reached, uh, the south pole in particular, that is uh, extremely, uh, you know, not only has it been mysterious in terms of uh, the craters, uh, in terms of the tracked ice and water that uh, exists on it, but uh, also the very fact that India has landed 69 degrees uh, south of the equator. So uh, a lot that will come out in terms of understanding the composition of the moon. And uh, like I said, that uh, not only are we a part of the elite space club, where India is the fourth nation to have achieved a soft landing uh, uh, or a soft touchdown on the moon, but uh, the uncharted territory of the South Pole, that India is the first to reach and then to understand uh, and perform these experiments to gather the data of what comes will hugely help in further studies and understanding of the moon. To further All understand right. uh, the moon. Uh, also, I believe uh, that yesterday, after this very historic moment, and among all the jubilation uh, that uh, we, uh, the entire India has been celebrating, uh, uh, our colleague Shavan Sen had also spoken to uh, Mr. Somnath, uh, the ISRO chief, on this uh, momentous occasion uh, to understand what next and how exactly will the experiments be performed. Let's listen in to what he said.